In this video, we can discuss about pharmacology of thyroid hormone and thyroid inhibitors. In this, we will discuss an introduction to the thyroid stimulating hormone which is produced from anterior pituitary hormone since this will regulate the release of thyroid hormone and we will discuss the pharmacology of thyroid hormone and its inhibitors which include regulation of release synthesis mechanism of action actions hormonal disorders and drugs used in hormonal disorders so as we mentioned before thyroid hormones are secreted by thyroid gland under the influence of thyroid stimulating hormone which is produced from anterior pituitary gland so thyroid stimulating hormone is an anterior pituitary hormone which will regulate the release of thyroid hormone from the thyroid gland through the release of thyroid stimulating hormone and the release of thyroid hormone from the thyroid gland is regulated by hypothalamus so hypothalamus will release thyrotropin releasing hormone when if there is a deficiency of thyroid hormone so by the action of this thyrotropin releasing hormone anterior pituitary get stimulated and the anterior pituitary will release thyroid stimulating hormone so this thyroid stimulating hormone will stimulate the thyroid gland for the synthesis and release of thyroid hormones so that is the regulation of release of thyroid hormones now what are the different thyroid hormones present in the body our thyroid gland will secrete three hormones thyroxine triiodothyronine and calcitonin and the first two is known as thyroid hormone and calcitonin which is another hormone which will regulate the calcium metabolism so this thyroxine and th triiodothyronine are produced by thyroid follicles which have similar biological activity and they are termed as thyroid hormone now coming to the synthesis of thyroid hormone under the influence of thyroid stimulating hormone which is released from the anterior pituitary gland thyroid hormones are synthesized and stored in thyroid follicles as the part of thyroglobulin molecules which are glycoprotein synthesized by thyroid cells with a molecular weight of 660 kilodalton which containing 10 percentage sugar and there are five steps for the synthesis of thyroid hormone iodine trapping oxidation of uh, oxidation and iodination coupling storage and release and peripheral conversion of t4 to protein t3 form so first one is iodine trapping so the iodine which is present in the capillaries or blood vessels are actively transported through an iodine symbiote for uh, of iodide ion to thyroid follicle cells which is uh, stimulated by thyroid stimulating hormone so that is the first step iodine trapping there will be an active transport of iodine to the thyroid follicles through iodide symbiote now coming to the second step oxidation and iodination so the iodine which has trapped trapped by the follicular cells is carried across the apical membrane by another transporter term uh, termed as pendry so this iodide transported to the uh, apical membrane is oxidized oxidized to iodine by peroxidase enzyme so the oxidized iodine will combine with the tyrosine of thyroglobulin to form mono iodothyrosine as well as diiodothyrosine which is represented as mid as well as did and coming to the next next step that is the coupling so the monoiodothyrosine will combine with the diiodothyrosine to form triiodothyronine as well as diiodothyrosine will combine with another diiodothyrosine to form t4 that is thyroxine 
So this is the coupling process. And all this coupling process is uh, catalyzed by the same enzyme thyroid peroxidase. In here, the production of thyroid thyroxine, that is T4, will be greater than T3 in this stage. Now coming to the fourth stage or fourth step, that is the storage and release. In this, thyroglobulin containing iodinated thyrosyl as well as thyroidine residue is transported to the interior of the follicles and remains stored as thyroid colloids till it is taken into the cells by endocytosis and broken down by lysosome protease. So whenever the necessary of thyroid hormone is there, the, they will uh, convert the T4 to potent T3 form. So this is the uh, process of synthesis. First one is the iodine trapping through NIS. Then that is transported to the apical cell through pendrine. And second step is cup, uh, iodination by thyroid peroxidase. So they will combine with the thyrosine molecules to form monoidothyrosine or diidothyrosine. Now coming to the third step that is coupling. So in here monoidothyrosine may combine with the diidothyrosine to form T3 and two diidothyrosine molecules will combine with it to form T4. And this T3 and T4 may combine with the colloidal nature and uh, they will uh, take into the endocytosis along with the lysosome enzyme. So during the necessary of the hormone, thyroid hormone, due to the action of lysosome, that will be released. So when there is a, when uh, it release, there will be a conversion of T4 to T3 because T3 is the more potent form. So this is the steps of synthesis of thyroid hormone. Now coming to the mechanism of action, both this T3 as well as T4 thyroid hormone will penetrate the cell by active transport and they will produce majority of their action by combining with the nuclear thyroid hormone receptor. So by the action of this receptor, it will produce their physiological actions. Now what are the actions or physiological roles of thyroid hormone? First role is for the growth and development. So the opti for the optimum growth and development, the optimum level of uh, different thyroid hormone like T4 and T3 is essential. Now coming to the second action or second role that is the intermediary metabolism. Usually uh, due to the presence of thyroid hormone this intermediary metabolism will get increases and they will produce different metabolic reactions like liposis in case of lipid metabolism and in case of carbohydrate metabolism it will increases glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis so thereby it will increase the blood glucose level and it may lead to hyperglycemia and in case of protein metabolism it will increase the protein synthesis now coming to the third action calorigenesis the thyroid hormone will increase the basal metabolic rate by stimulation of cellular metabolism and this is very important for the maintaining body temperature also now coming to next action that is in CVS cardiovascular system uh, and due to the action of thyroid hormone it will produce an hyperdynamic state of circulation rate contractility and cardiac output will increase by the action of thyroid hormone. Now coming to next action in nervous system optimum level of thyroid hormone is necessary for the optimum condition of the nervous system so if in case of hypothyroidism it may lead to mental retardation and in case of hyperthyroidism it may lead to hyperactivity in individuals now coming next action in skeletal muscle it may cause flappy and weak in myxedema and increased return in case of hyperthyroidism and in case of git thyroid hormone will increases the motility so hypothyroidism may cause constipation. So optimum level of thyroid hormone is necessary for the uh, proper movement of GIT also. 
Now, in case of kidney, it is not a diuretic, but the rate of urine flow will increase due to the action of thyroid hormone. And anemia may occur due to hypothyroidism since thyroid hormone is necessary for the homeoposis, that is the production of different blood components like RPC, etc. Now, in case of reproduction, or thyroid hormone is necessary for the uh, optimum reproductive function so it may lead to uh, fertility impaired uh, in case of uh, hypothyroidism cases so these are the different actions of thyroid hormone now coming to different preparation which are used in case of hypothyroidism levothyroxine sodium eothyronine and combination of t4 as well as 3t t3 tablets so these are the different preparations which are available for the treatment of hypothyroidism in this there will be a decreased secretion of thyroid hormone now what are the different uh, uses of thyroid hormone which are used in case of hypothyroidism first one is cretinism which is the failure of thyroid development or defect in the hormone synthesis due to the extreme iodine deficiency we can use thyroid hormone for the treatment of cretinism and also we can use uh, the thyroid hormone for the treatment of adult hypothyroidism which is known as myxedema which is a disorder which developed as a consequence of autoimmune thyroiditis and thyro thyroidectomy removal of thyroid gland and we can also use for the treatment of myxedema coma due to the acute hypothyroidism characterized by progressive mental deterioration. Then for the treatment of non-toxic goiter which is increasing size of gland due to the deficiency of iodine but there will be an increased excess uh, uh, or there will be an excess of thyroid stimulating hormone from pituitary gland also and also for the treatment of thyroid nodulus which is a solid or liquid filled lump uh, to form uh, that form within the thyroid gland so we can also uh, use it to uh, replace the hypothyroidism in case of thyroid nodulus and also in case of papillary carcinoma of thyroid and for the empirical use like refractory anemia mental depression menstrual disorder infertility not corrected by usual treatment chronic non-healing ulcers and obstinate constipation so these are the different uses of thyroid hormone so these are used in case of hypothyroidism now in case of hyperthyroidism if there is an increased thyroid hormone in our body we may have to use thyroid inhibitors so thyroid inhibitors are the drugs which are used to lower the capacity of hyperactive thyroid gland so what will happen if there is an hyperactive thyroid gland is there there will be an excessive secretion of thyroid hormone and it may lead to hyperthyroidism or thyrotoxicosis so thyroid inhibitors are the drugs which are used for the treatment of hyperthyroidism or thyrotoxicosis and there are two main causes for thyrotoxicosis that is grave disease which is an autoimmune disorder and toxic nodular coat now coming to the classification of thyroid inhibitors these are the tricks which are used for the treatment of hyperthyroidism or thyrotoxicosis it is mainly classified into five. First one is the tricks which will inhibit the hormone synthesis which is also known as anti-thyroid tricks like propyl thyroxine methimazole and carbimazole tricks which will inhibit the iodine trapping like iodine ionic inhibitors like thiocyanate nitrate and perchlorate third classification is tricks which will inhibit the hormone release iodine sodium iodide potassium iodide and organic iodide and fourth one is tricks which will destroy the thyroid tissues like radioisotope i131 i123 and i125 and fifth one is beta blockers like propanolol now let's see one by one first one is anti-thyroid drugs or the, the uh, hormone synthesis inhibitors like propyl thyroxine methimazole and carbimazole 
Now, what is the mechanism of action of hormonal synthesis inhibitors? So, these will inhibit the synthesis of thyroid hormone by binding to the thyroid peroxidase, which is an enzyme responsible for the iodination as well as coupling. So, they will prevent the oxidation of iodine and iodo iodothyrosyl residues. Thereby, they will inhibit the iodination of tyrosine residues in thyroglobulin and also they will inhibit the coupling of iodothyrosine residue to form T3 and T4 of hor uh, thyroid hormones. So, that is the mechanism of action. They will bind to the thyroid peroxidase enzyme and they will prevent the oxidation as well as coupling. Now, these are the some difference between uh, antithyroid hormone propyl thiouracil and carbimazole. Thiouracil is less potent, carbimazole is five times more potent. Uh, thiouracil is highly plasma protein bounded, carbimazole is less and thiouracils are less transferred across the placenta as well as milk. Carbimazole will large, uh, large amount of uh, carbimazole will cross to the fetus and milk and plasma half-life is 1 to 2 hour for papilloracis is 6 to 10 hour in case of carbimazole and single dose act for 4 to 8 hour in case of propylthiouracil and 12 to 24 hours in case of carbimazole. There is no active metabolite but in case of carbimazole it may produce active metabolites and the multiple, uh, multiple dose uh, daily dose is needed in case of propyl thiouracil carbimazole single dose is needed and they will inhibit the peripheral conversion in uh, propyl thiouracil it do not inhibit the T4 to T3 conversions so that is the difference between uh, antithyroid drug uh, propyl thiouracil and carbimazole now coming to the adverse drug reaction Due to the inhibition of hormonal synthesis, it may lead to hypothyroidism and goiter and some gastrointestinal intolerance, skin rashes, joint pain, loss or graying of hair, loss of taste, fever and liver damage are infrequent for antithyroid drugs. Uh, then a granulocytosis are rare. So these are the adverse drug reactions of antithyroid drugs or thyroid hormone synthesis inhibitors. Now coming to the uses, antithyroid drugs are mainly used for to control thyroid toxicosis in case of grave diseases as well as toxic nodular goiter. Now coming to the second classification of thyroid inhibitor that is ionic inhibitors like thiocyanate, nitrate and perchlorate and they will act by a mechanism they will uh, competitively inhibit the iodine trapping by sodium iodine symbiote into the thyroid probably because of uh, the similar hydrated ionic size T4, T3 cannot be synthesized. So that is the mechanism of action. They will competitively inhibit the iodine trapping. So iodine trapping is the first step for the synthesis of thyroid hormone. So that will be inhibited. So a T3 and T4 will not be synthesized. So that is the mechanism of action of iodine inhibitors. Now coming to the adverse drug reaction, thiocyanate may cause liver, kidney and bone marrow and brain toxicity. Perchlorate may uh, produce rashes, fever, aplastic anemia and granulocytosis. Due to the, this toxic action, ionic inhibitors are not used clinically nowadays. Now coming to next class of drug that is iodine and iodate like iodine, sodium iodate, potassium iodate as well as organic iodate. So as we know iodine is uh, a constituent of thyroid hormone which is required for the synthesis of thyroid hormone also. But uh, it is also can be used uh, as an iodine inhibitors. So they will act by decreasing the response of thyroid gland to the thyroid stimulating hormone from anterior pituitary so thereby release of iodine in the circulation will be decreased and it will decrease the size of glands and it may lead to shrinkage of glands and these are the different preparations which can be used for used as an 
uh, iodine or iodide preparation for the treatment of hyperthyroidism, blue gold solution as well as iodide. So coming to the adverse drug reaction, it may produce acute reactions like swelling of lip, eyelid, angioedema, larynx, fever, joint pain, petechial hemorrhages, thrombocytopenia and lymphadenopathy and chronic or overdosage may lead to iodism so it may lead to inflammation of mucous membrane like pharynx as well as larynx salivation rhinorrhea sneezing lacrimation swelling of eyelid burning sensation of uh, mouth headache rashes and gi symptoms these are the adverse drug reactions of iodine and iodine now coming to uses, iodine and iodide are mainly used for pre-operative preparation for thyroid, thyroidectomy in grave diseases. Usually iodine is generally given 10 days just uh, preceding the surgery. Then it is also used for thyroid strong, low cold uh, iodine solution or iodine containing radio contrast media are given orally. Then also for the treatment of our prophylaxis of endo endemic goiter using iodinized salt then it is also used as an antiseptic as uh, tincture iodine or covid or 19 so these are the uses of iodine and iodide now coming to next uh, class of iodine uh, or, or hormonal inhibitors like uh, radioactive iodine so isotope with will emit alpha and gamma rays which having cytotoxic action on thyroid gland can be used for thyroid carcinoma the commonly used radioactive isotope is iodine 131 which is used as a sodium salt of i31 which is dissolved in water and given orally as solution or as capsule now what is the mechanism of action of iodine uh, radioactive iodine they will get concentrated in thyroid gland and they will emit the radiation of x-ray which is useful uh, in tracing of uh, tracer study in thyroid gland and also they will emit some beta particles uh, so these beta particles will help to destroy thyroid follicles now coming to uses it is mainly used in case of hypothyroidism due to the adenoma or carcinoma of the thyroid gland like in case of grave disease or toxic nodular goiter uh, when the surgery is not feasible we can use radioactive iodines now coming to the adverse drug reaction it is uh, the adverse important adverse drug reaction is due to the destruction of uh, thyroid gland it may lead to hypothyroidism and long lag time period of response to recover the uh, hormonal concentration in the body now they are contraindicated in case of pregnancy so fetal thyroid will also be destroyed resulting in cretinism which is not suitable for young patient they are likely to be develop hypothyroidism in later conditions so these are the radioactive uh, iodine adverse drug reaction as well as contraindication so that is all about the pharmacology of thyroid hormone and its inhibitors which are used in case of hyperthyroidism. Hope it is clear. Thank you for watching this video.